Hiya all, Rick here with another Starship Breakdown, similar to the last in which it's a vessel that slipped by me in the background of Star Trek Picard's introduction of many a vessel into canon. This time I am looking at the Edison class Starship. As with several other designs, this vessel was drawn from Star Trek Online's library of 25th century vessels and incorporated to flesh out the fleet alongside original Starships and the Edison has an origin story found in the lore of that game, but one that can be adapted to fit into the continuity of the shows quite easily. While the vessel on which it's based was created for Star Trek Discovery, that being the Hoover class by John Eaves, Hector Ortiz took the design and created a contemporary version for the game's setting, bringing its style in line with the look of the game. The 3D model was created by Tobias Richter and eventually found its way ported over to Star Trek Picard for their team to refine for the show. As with the real origin of the class, the Edison began its life as the Hoover class, which originated in the early 23rd century. This class of starships saw action during the Klingon Federation War of 2256, and many were in need of overhaul after encountering Klingon forces. Adaptable and easily maintainable, repairing these vessels was not an overly taxing job, but neither were they fantastic ships of the line. Many therefore ended up being sent to the infamous Yard 39, alongside Shepard, Nimitz and McGee class vessels where the Yard was soon contaminated by baryon radiation from the system's star. For 150 years, the yard remained uninhabitable to life and salvage operations were deemed too dangerous until the radiation had decayed enough to retrieve these space frames there. Many were preserved and some, like the Edison and Gagarin, were able to be stripped back to their basic frame and corridors then built up again with newer technology. While the Gagarin got the first round of treatments on the bones of the Shepard class, the Hoover was next up. Always a candidate for newer technologies and already adaptable, overhauling them proved surprisingly easy and the Edison class was born. The Advanced Ship Design Bureau was making use of unorthodox ways of generating new vessels, with Utopia Planitia still not operating at the capacity it used to, so we saw both the upgrading of older vessels as well as the extensive recycling of ships into new classes. This new class was named after the USS Edison NCC-1683, which was the first of the Hoover class to be lost in the Klingon War, and the project was helmed by Vice Admiral S. J. Hebbill at what remained of Utopia Planitia fleet yards. However, rather than simply recreate the Hoover's original role as a logistics, engineering, support and testbed vessel, Starfleet tailored it for a new role. That of temporal investigations. This makes it one of the earliest designated timeships in essence, although at the turn of the 25th century that is not a fantastical acclaim as it might sound. Starfleet had been able to time travel for centuries already, even undertaking observation missions, but they were not proficient at navigating the time stream like their future incarnations. The full extent of its temporal abilities are not revealed, although in the games it does time travel. I find it more likely in canon that it simply is more tailored to temporal observations and such, what with the Borg incursion of Sector 001, the contamination of the Prime timeline from Janeway's interference, the Temporal Cold War, and even the shifting of the Eugenics Wars dates by a couple of decades, well it's clear Starfleet needed to take the temporal investigations more seriously. This, therefore, would probably be the first designated class to keep an eye on time travel related phenomena and be equipped to handle them accordingly. This might be the reason for the abnormal deflector array, which juts out, shielded by a luminous translucent hull. Its length clocks in at 379.4 meters long, which makes it about 311 meters wide and 68 tall. Warp functionality is also not disclosed but it was made with the same implementation of technology as the Gagarin class, although its inherited frame, the Hoover, was not fantastic at achieving high speeds. 
but it could maintain steady factors. It was likely a warp 9.8 engine at least, but speed is not a necessity for its mission profile. At the rear it had a single impulse drive which was accentuated by six very small outlets in the nacelle pylons. With the impulse drive now sitting where the shuttle bay had been on the hoover, there was a very small couple of hatches at the rear of the saucer which contained a very reserved number of small craft. This is radically different from the standard shuttle bays, more akin to the Defiant class style minimalist approach. It was armed with 11 Mark 12 phaser arrays, although its torpedo launchers are rather harder to identify. It appears to have no rear torpedoes that I could locate, and two four launchers, although it probably has at least one aft. However, the two four launchers were capable, like those of the Galaxy class, of unloading a barrage of multiple warheads in one go. According to the STO's law, the vessel was equipped not only with the standard deflector shielding but also temporal shielding. This shielding prevented alterations to time from affecting it when they were raised. This advanced shield system also offered a level of adaptability above that of regular shielding, in that it could be adapted to bolster either impulse manoeuvring or allow a variety of particles to pass through if needed. The downside is that when being adapted so, its power output lessened, but this is far more useful for a vessel that is not expected to face major combat but might encounter all sorts of unknown strangeness. It also housed a molecular deconstruction beam, which, well, does what it says. It uses the temporal core to break down molecules in its path, presumably effectively aging the material to weaken it which also means it likely had some form of temporal core. It also had the ability to create all sorts of exotic particles and matter that could have some detrimental effects, but also these can be used for various experiments, giving it a bit of a mixture of a scientific and engineering role. It's a very strange vessel. Speculation here, but the Edison seems to be a case of a craft being built out of a serviceable space frame, but adapted to fit a purpose that came up last minute. By that I mean perhaps the Department of Temporal Investigations was pushing for a class of its own dedicated to responding to time issues, and someone asked, well what about these old frames we recovered from Yard 39? The addition of all these temporal systems seems to come out of nowhere, although the Hoover class was noted for its ease of maintenance, so such systems might be readily added to the already adaptable Hoover. What emerges is a class that's a bit of everything, no longer the engineering testbed and workhorse it was, but not quite a dedicated science ship either, and it has some interesting tactical applications while being specialised in temporal phenomena. If this lore is maintained in the canon of the shows, then that makes this Starfleet's first single class that is dedicated to temporal mechanics, and that's a pretty standout feature. Otherwise, it's simply an engineering and support craft made for the turn of the century, which is less interesting. So that about covers the lore of the Edison class, and it has some interesting potential. I've been Rick, and I'll see you next time for another lore video. Until then, thanks again for watching, and goodbye.